Because love that you bring up family, I, 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 and I want to touch on that, but I want to go backwards. And I don't typically ask these types of questions I'm about to ask you on this show. But because you are, you, you, you're not just a regular person who worked with these people. You worked alongside of them. You're friends with them. You can pick up the phone and get directly through them. Why do you think, you know, in, if you don't really have an answer, that's fine. But I use this platform every chance that I can. I think Puff catches a lot of flack. He catches a lot of heat out there. And I don't think that there are enough people like yourself, like myself, who have come from that school and have done extremely well for themselves and have the yin to the yang of people who find it necessary to dump on his name. But I don't, I don't necessarily get that with the Jays of the world or any of the other executives out there, why do you think he gets it so much? And just as a bigger picture, like, you know, you don't hear this going on in white companies and it drives me crazy. If you work for Chase Bank or you work for IBM or, or Apple, you don't see people coming out the woodwork years later talking about Steve Jobs did X, Y, and Z to me or the president or, or, or the owner of, of Chase did X, Y. Why, why is this so prevalent in our community? And what is it about him? Because yeah. he, even within our community, I don't necessarily hear that with the Jermaine Dupree's or any of these other guys who, who built these incredible, incredible businesses. So I think it's two things. I think, I mean, the first part is, is, is obvious, right? We are, we are inherently crabs in a barrel just because of how we've been socialized here in America. And, that, and it's not our fault, but at some point, it not being our fault can't be okay, right? We got, we got to stop pulling each other down because that's just not healthy. It's not productive, right? It's not healthy. At a certain point, if we're trying to become healthier and more successful and more advanced as a people, we got to start breaking some of the, some of the historical chains that have always you know, held us down, held us back. Um, with Puff in particular, especially, um, you know, different, different than maybe some of those other examples that you gave, the problem with Puff, or the, or the gift and the curse with Puff is that he is so charismatic and so infectious that everyone feels like they're closer to it than they really are, right? And so, like, you know, he's the type of person because he's a salesman, right? And he he's in the, he could sell anything to anyone. And right, and he's the guy, he's putting that battery in your back. And if he thinks that you're a star, if he thinks you're a star, and by the way, he thinks a lot of people could be stars. Now, whether you realize that stardom or not is really on you based on the energy that you put out there. But if he thinks that you could be a star, he's going to put that battery in your back. He's going to see you, and which is really, really counter to what people think of him when they see him from the outside looking in. You don't realize what a celebrator of people that he is. And he's going to call you. I remember when I didn't work there and I was working with Jay and I did some campaign and I remember we, we, we looked at the ad campaigns like the Super Bowl. So like, you know, me, we would just go crazy. So I remember I had like 35 pages, like the first 35 pages of Vibe Magazine, the first 25 pages of the source. And I remember Puff calling me like, nigga, 35 pages? Oh, oh my. And, but he's going to call you and he's going to celebrate you because that's who he is. And so that energy makes people think that he owes you something, right? That when he's putting that battery in your back. Now realize this about Puff though. When you stop being relevant, he still likes you, but he ain't concerned about you no more. That's who he is, right? And so and he and he does have a small universe of people that I, I think he calls friends that, you know, that's not the litmus test, but I think there's still frustration even in those regards because Puff is always on to the next. Puff is staying next to and around whatever is hot in culture. And so if you're a hot executive, he's trying to find a way to get you to come work for him. If he can't have you come work for him, then how can we do business together? If you're a hot artist, you're the hottest artist, he's going to come and meet you. He know, I guarantee you that there's no big artist right now today that he has not had a conversation with, probably had to his house and had wine and food and, and, and really spent significant time because he is a curator of culture, right? And to the extent that you're on the, 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 the pulse of culture, then he's spending the time and energy. The problem is 
if you think about it, a guy that's been relevant for the last 25 years, it's hard to keep up with all that. Right. Yep. And so, so like, you know, the guy that is the hottest, the hottest executive, hottest, hottest entrepreneur, hottest, whatever it is that that's relevant to him today. Uh, and, and the guy that was that 25 years ago, that's not that anymore. That guy that's, and by the way, the frustration that those people have with Puff is their inability to look at themselves for not doing their part. Their inability, and, and, if, and, and nine times out of 10 is somebody that's just bitter because if you, no one that's successful is walking around bitter about what Puff didn't do for them. Let's just be honest, right? If you're successful and you came from the Puff school, then you appreciate what he did for you. Correct. Whether, whether you had a good experience or bad experience, no matter what, you walk around today, you still, James Cruz walks around today still appreciative of the, the gifts and the jewels and the time, the good, bad, and indifferent that he got with Puff because James Cruz ain't James Cruz without the Puff experience, right? And, and same thing with you, same thing with me, same, Emmett, who, whoever worked there and is still flourishing, we got fond memories of it because you realize like sometimes the medicine don't taste good, but if it makes you feel better, then that's what it is, right? But if you're taking that medicine, right, and, and you're still sick, then you're mad. I'm taking this damn medicine and I'm and I'm still sick, right? And so like if and I'm it's just the beat to keep it a buck, right? Like the, I would imagine, you know, the large majority of people who are walking around mad at Puff really are mad at themselves for either they, you know, they didn't do what they thought they were supposed to do, or they didn't work hard enough, or they stayed too long, or whatever it is. And 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 those are all things, but at the end of the day, there's nothing that goes bad between two people that's just one person's fault. Right. And it's convenient for people to blame it all on him because, you know what, they're watching him and he's still soaring and they're not. And that shit hurts. Yeah. That hurts. It's like, man, I was I was I was with him every day. How was I with him every day? And now he's doing all these things and he's in these rooms and I ain't in these rooms. Oh, man. Right. Where if you're still doing your thing, you're not giving it to you. You don't even got time to think about it like that. I appreciate everything that I ever went through with anybody in any way, because I'm too focused on still being successful. I'm still, I'm focused on still winning. And so I don't got like, you know, being focused on winning doesn't give you the time to focus on, you know, what, what could have been. And the reality is that if you don't look at um, the, the tough times and the negative things as positive influences to your life, then you got the wrong perspective. Right. There's no such thing as a loss. There's just a lesson. It's a and lesson. So I think the people that are, yeah. No and so, so I think the people that are mad at Puff, like they, it's wasted energy. You know, they, I, I would I, even even the people. And I, again, I'm sure there's stories out there that make all the sense in the world. If you and if somebody took the time to sit there and listen to you about it. But like you couldn't even tell me the story. I, I'd stop you in the middle of it. Like, yo, my man, that ain't none of my business. <laughs> like my, my business is in keeping things moving in the right direction. I, I can't, I can't be, you know, talking about what Puff did. I mean, I mean, unless, if, unless he's your father or, or somebody in your family, like that's not his responsibility. It's not his responsibility for you to still be successful today. That's not, not his job. Right. And he might, yeah, he might've done things um, that weren't fair, but you know what? I, I mean, at a certain point, like I said, we all, we all, you know, we all men, we all women, we're all people that showed up, for relationships, or maybe if you didn't have your paperwork right, if you didn't, there's a lot of reasons why, like, you know, nobody could get over on anyone that didn't contribute to it in some way, right? No, that no one's full on a victim. Like, you, you might be a victim of a circumstance, but you you definitely contributed to those circumstances. I, I, I love that you touched on, uh, he, the, this guy's not your father. And, you know, I'm so happy to hear from your perspective. I, I think it needs to be more stories, more voices, more people coming forth. Just to, what I got from that school, that that PhD in business that I personally got, I don't care if that man don't never do nothing else for me. And you like, got paid for it. And you got, pay, you, you got paid to learn. To learn. To uh, I mean, like that, that's the, and I, and I actually, I call that, that's my business school. Like I, I remember um, when we, when we had Blue Flame, I had, there was, the, the, there was, there was two, there was two uh, members of the team. It was Emmett yep. and it was Guy Primus and Guy Primus had a Harvard MBA. And I remember, um, you know, 
being like mildly intimidated by that. Like, damn, this guy is reporting to me. He is, he's got an <laughs> MBA, right? And, but he was looking at me like, nah, man, you done did all these things. And, and, I, and I look at that time that I spent with Puff at Bad Boy as my business school. That's I learned how to move. I learned how to show up. I learned how to be prepared. I learned how to not take no for an answer. I knew, I learned how to, like the, the, the value of work ethic. Like I learned so much from Puff. I've learned so much from every experience. And, and that's the reality is that if you are upset about your experience, then you haven't taken the value of all the learnings, right? Because that's all they were, good, bad, or indifferent. Like I, there's, no, I don't, there's nothing that has happened to me in my, in my career Right where I could say, "Oh man, I'm still mad about that." Nah, you gotta you gotta move on because that energy you can't hold that energy like that. That energy just holds you back. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's not productive whatsoever. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.